Good morning. Is there a call to repent in the invitation to don bonds and yokes? Our reading is at Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 1 to 6. We're following the chronology of Jeremiah in these six verses. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourselves bonds and yokes, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, and the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers who come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and I have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant, and the beasts of the field I have also given him to serve him. Now, a lot of manuscripts have also at this place, instead of Jehoiakim in verse 1, they have Zedekiah, which matches verse 3 and verse 12. So that we have a variation in manuscripts there. Probably should say Zedekiah. But let's look at the broader issue going on here. God gives Jeremiah a shop project. He's to build yokes and bonds, enough to hand out to all the different envoys of the Ammonite king, the king of Tyre, and so on. And they're to, when they come to Jerusalem, he's to pass these out, and they're to take them back and tell their masters back in their home nation uh, you need to come under the yoke of the king of Babylon. That's what God, the God of the Hebrews, says, Yahweh. So you've got here kind of one of those object lesson things going on. So the message is God has determined that you are to be under the uh, authority of Nebuchadnezzar, and you're supposed to do that. So why send this message to these six kings? Well, back in Jeremiah 25, about 11 years before this, there seems to have been a similar messages. And, you know, these nations did not just want to be under the thumb of Babylon, and they must have entertained continuing doubts and feeling of, we want to resist, we want to resist that. But God is telling them, no, you are going to be, I've made this determination, uh, I'm the creator, you're under me, and I'm putting you under Babylon for a while. So that's the command that comes from God. So now through Jeremiah the prophet, God is trying to help these sovereign kings to recognize that he is the sovereign God, and they're all really underneath. Uh, God is in ultimate control. Everybody else is in something less. But humans don't naturally just cleave to that. We often want to be in charge ourselves. So now the God is, of the Hebrews has determined that this is the way it's going to be. You can save yourself a lot of trouble by, by working with Babylon rather than trying to resist it. And by giving this message through Jeremiah, God is really putting them on, putting things on the line. He's really kind of saying, you know, you need to... I'm the sovereign God, you need to do what I say. He's putting them on notice, you need to do this. By making this declaration, they're now responsible to obey and they would be guilty if they don't. So yes, the call is indeed a call to them to repent and to turn and do what they're told, which would be a helpful thing for them in getting kind of to grips with the order that they're in, the way the universe really works. And sadly, many times people have to learn the hard way that God is sovereign over his universe. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, you are the sovereign God. You are in control. We are not apart from you completely. We, we should listen closely and follow your ways when you give them to us. Sometimes your commands are very basic, and your commands to these kings are very basic. Lord, it makes us wonder how many of them really heeded these commands and how many just tried to evade at all costs uh, coming under the control of Babylon. It would seem like naturally we would not want to be under the control of Babylon, but Lord, we must follow your ways when you show them. So help us to remember you are ultimately the sovereign, you are over all, and you're over us too. Please, Lord, be over our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So it's kind of simple. When God sends us information, we're under obligation to try to understand it and obey it. And when we do that, we're going to have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus Christ. God be with you today.